right. All righty, so we are on to week two of our back to basics um, training that we just started last week. And I appreciate you guys hopping on. And for those of you guys that are watching this on replay, thank you for taking the time out um, to stop and really, you know, kind of learn about some different areas of your business that you may really be struggling with. Um, I think for me, social media is probably up there um, knowledge wise with, you know, importance as far as knowing how to navigate it and knowing how to use it. Just like really knowing all the ins and outs of virtual parties. Um, because most of you guys that are doing virtual parties are also trying to run a very social media based business. Um, and so it's not a traditional, you know, I wouldn't call you guys a traditional consultant. You know, when you're doing everything from a virtual platform, you really have to know how to leverage everything from a, a virtual platform. Um, and I would tell you that, you know, 95% of our team are Facebook users. And I know some of you guys kind of dabble in Instagram as well. Um, and there's really, there really are ways and strategies that you can go about using the platforms to your advantage. So we're going to kind of start off with, you know, what I would say are some of the do's and don'ts. Okay. Um, so I know some of you guys have been around a while and you've heard me kind of talk about some of these things before. Um, and you know, we're going to start with the don'ts first, because <laughs> I think that the don'ts are really, um, some of those things that they really do impact your business. Okay. Um, so I want you guys to remember that people are always watching you. Okay. So first and foremost, whether they interact with you or they don't interact with you, they are always watching you. Okay. I, I can promise you that. Um, so I know sometimes we think, you know, man, I've got like, you know, 500 friends, but I know I only talk to the same five, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I can promise you that, you know, probably another quarter of your friends are watchers. You know, some of us, I know myself, I'm one of those watchers. Like I scroll my Facebook feed and, and I just kind of read and, you know, kind of observe more than interact with people, um, which we're going to talk about here in a second. But, you know, I think that, some of that is because we deal with so many different types of personalities in this kind of business that, you know, not everybody wants to be that person out in front of everyone. Um, and I kind of think about it in our, in our virtual parties or in our cooking shows, you may have 10 or 20 people there, but think about it. How many of them actually participate and how many of them order? Okay. So what you're going to see is normally about a quarter of your show, regardless of the style are typically your people that participate. But, you know, more than a quarter are going to typically order. Would you guys agree that normally you have your, you know, four or five people that are really involved with the party, but then you normally end up with like seven or eight orders when all is said and done. Mm -hmm. So when you think about that, it really does kind of drive home the fact that people are always watching. They may not participate because they just may not want to be that person that's out there, you know, kind of in everyone's business, even though they are in everyone's business. Um, so that tells me a couple different things. So if you know your friends are watching, there are things that they're going to be watching for, and there's things that are really going to prevent them from watching in the future. And one of the biggest things that I can tell you guys right now is that we're going into an election year. Okay. And I know this is a hot topic for a lot of people. Um, and even consultants on our teams, um, you know, I, I really should not be able to look at your newsfeed and tell what political party you represent. Okay. Yes. We're all entitled to our points of view. We're all entitled to whatever party we feel, you know, is best representative of us. But when you're working your business from a social media standpoint, you don't want people to know what party you believe in. Okay. And why would, why would I say that? Well, because remember that, okay, think about the 2016 election, right? Half of the country went one way and half of the country went the other way. And so what is that going to, you know, tell you about your friends that half are going to be on one side and half are going to be on the other side. Okay. So being as hot of a topic as politics are in our culture nowadays, you know, whether you're on one side or the other, it's a polar opposite. It's not even an opposite anymore. It's a polar opposite. And so you may be on the left or the right, but that person that's opposite view of you most likely 
is of the belief that they completely, totally disagree with you no matter what you say. And so it's also a reason for them not to want to have a business relationship with you if you are of the opposite view. Right. Does that make sense for you guys? Oh, yes. Yeah. So limit yourself <laughs> to what you're posting on social media or any type of social media platform because you don't want to alienate people. You know, those of you guys that know me closely know exactly where my mindset is in politics, but my customers have no idea how I feel about politics because I don't want to alienate them and lose their business. Okay. So I really want you guys to keep a conscious effort of that to really kind of remember your audience. Half of them are, are always going to be on the opposite side of the spectrum from you. Okay. Um, some of us have very strong viewpoints, whether it be, you know, with pro-life or not pro-life or, you know, racial issues or whether you believe in things and don't believe in things and your political party you represent. So just remember there's someone always opposite of you. Okay. We don't really want to steer people away from you. We want to draw people into you. Um, so here's another don't. Okay. So once we get past all that, don't be that person that is driving pampered chef down their throat 24 hours a day. Okay. People really want to get to know you. They want to get to know your family. They want to get to know about your life. They want to get to know about things that make Branda amazing, right? <clears throat> they already know most likely that you're a pamper chef consultant. So we always want to remind ourselves to follow the 80-20 rule, okay? When you're on your personal wall, 80% of your posts should be about you, your personal life, your family, and those kinds of things. 20% of it should be about Pampered Chef, okay? And now when I talk about 20% should be about Pampered Chef, that doesn't mean it's 20% of, hey, book a show, hey, buy this product, hey, book a show, hey, buy this product, okay? We don't want to constantly drive down the fact that we're in desperate need of bookings because whether you believe it or not, constantly reminding people that you need to book shows tells them one thing. Do you guys know what that one thing is? Thank you. What is it? One of you. We're desperate. We're desperate. Exactly. <laughs> and do you guys want to work with desperate people? Yeah. No. It actually detracts from people wanting to host a show for you. Okay. So just remember that people want to follow or people want to participate with successful people. And so when they constantly see you, oh my God, I need sales. Oh my God, I need a booking. Who's going to book a show with me? They're like, oh, wow. You know, hey, Brand is really not doing good in her business. You know, I don't think that I'm going to choose to work with Branda. If she's already here, she's probably not going to be a consultant for very much longer. So let me go with this more successful consultant over here. Make sense? Yeah. So, I mean, Think about it. You know, that's why there's movie stars and actresses and like rock stars, right? Because people follow them. They're successful. And, you know, people want to emulate, be like, be around people that they admire and people that they're attracted to, people that are successful people. So, you know, those that 20% then of your posting about Pampered Chef needs to be about you know, kind of establishing your vision for your business, right? So as you reach those small or big milestones in your business, celebrating that with your friends and family, you know, so like today I posted and, you know, if you look down my wall, you're not going to see me post very often about Pamper Jeff, right? So today I posted about, you know, me earning the Disney trip and thanking my, co my customer, customers, yeah, customers and hosts, you know, and how much it's a blessing to my family nothing about, oh my gosh, book a show with me. Right. But you know, people tend to see that and they're like, wow, she's doing really well for herself. Right. 
but it also attracts people to say, hmm, you know, I've been really thinking about Pampered Chef and if Becky can do this and earn trips, then maybe I should send Becky a message, right? Guys, I've gotten two messages today from people that are interested in the business right now wow. because they know for years and years and years and years, now I've traveled with Pampered Chef for free every single year. And so they see that and they're watchers. They're the watchers. These are people in my almost nine years of Pampered Chef that I, one of them I've, I've had one conversation with. She was at a party like six and a half years ago. And the other one I've never spoken to about the business opportunity before. They're watching. They're watching you. So if you're posting about your small goals, your big goals and reaching those um, milestones in your business that you're reaching and accomplishing, or the other tactic that you would want to post is soft selling, right? So maybe it's just something amazing you made in your kitchen tonight and you have the products in the background and the recipe front and center that you made. So they see the products that you're using, right? They see the food that those pro products created. And I'm simply talking about, oh my gosh, this, you know, chicken bruschetta pasta was amazing tonight. You know, the kids absolutely loved it. And then you share a recipe link with them. That's not me selling products, right? That picture is speaking volumes because you're giving them a recipe, you're showing them the products that you're used and they're seeing the finished result with it. That is soft selling, okay? Hard selling would be, oh my gosh, look, I made this in this rock crock and you, know, you can get it for 60% off next month. Who wants to book a party with me? That's hard selling. That's what we really wanna limit ourselves to, okay? Soft selling works wonders. It works wonders and wonders and wonders. Um, so some more do nots, okay? What are, what are some do nots that you guys would think of? What are some other things on social media that you probably shouldn't do? Post things that don't have very nice language in them. Woohoo! yes. Be conscious of your language. I love it. Um, and I would say to top that off, be conscious of your grammar, right? Because if you're, uh, oh guys, I've seen some hot mess posts in my day, let me tell you. And again, it goes back to people read that, they see that and they're like, I don't know that I would want her to do a virtual party with me, right? If she's posting this like this grammar wise, can you imagine what seven days of Becky posting would be if it was all grammar -fied like that, you know? I mean, those, that's really how people do think. Renee, what would you think are some don'ts? Um, <laughs> don't let your dog scare you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I try to be real careful about sexually explicit stuff. Yeah. Everything I post, I want it to be family friendly. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, again, it goes back to the watchers. You know, they're, they're yeah. constantly watching us. Um, and, and really, if somebody's on the fence about hosting a show with you, what I want you guys to constantly think in your mind is, is this post going to be the thing that attracts people to me or detracts people from me? Okay. So if you are getting ready to post something and you have to question yourself about it, then you probably shouldn't post it, right? If it's like, oh, I don't know if I should post this or not, then most likely that's you telling you to not post it. <laughs> so what do you think, Angie? What are some don'ts that you would think? Definitely keep drama off of there. So many people add their drama, their life, and write a book. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Write a book, you know, or, you know, find that accountability button that, or button, accountability partner that you can have those conversations with, you know, mm -hmm. schedule a call with me. I'm a great person to vent to as long as you let me vent back sometimes. Um, <laughs> you know, and another thing, if you have the stomach flu or virus, or you are going like, you know, the bathroom is your best friend, Nobody wants to know that, okay? <laughs> Especially if you're a cooking show consultant, right? It, I mean, come on. If I, if I, let's say I have a party schedule for Friday and it's like Sunday and I'm like, oh my God, I got, my family got hit with the flu and I've been in the bathroom all day long. What do you think my host is thinking for her show on Friday? Hmm. Gross. 
Uh, first of all, I think we need to reschedule. Second of all, I don't think I want you near my house if you have the flu. So, you know, those are the kinds of things though, guys, that really can tank your business. Okay. So here's the, the dudes do be positive. Okay. People love positive people. People love people that are highly motivated. People love people that are inspiring. People love and are drawn and magnetized to that kind of person. Okay. People want to naturally be with successful people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, use your personal profile to promote yourself that way, right? That, you know, this is my life. Pampered Chef is a small part of my life. And that small part of my life that Pampered Chef belongs to really makes me feel good about myself. Okay. So that's for your personal wall. So let's talk about your VIP groups and your business pages. So you really should have both, okay? And if you don't have both, you want to have both. Your VIP group um, is a private, more uh, condensed setting for people to go to where you want to follow an 80-20 rule, but it's completely opposite of how you're following it on your personal profile. So 80% of it is business content and 20% of it is personal content because we still want our customers to get to know us, but they're there because they want to be there for your business. Okay. So there's a lot of do's and don'ts with your VIP groups too. So you want to really dig in and make it a community setting, okay? You want it to feel like a little group of close-knit friends that are having conversations about things that they're doing in their kitchen, ways that you're assisting in that, um, and really build relationships through that. Um, you want to plan your content of what you're gonna post in your VIP groups. Now I know for some people that really scares them. They're like, oh my gosh, I have no idea where to even start, right? So I don't know, are any of you guys in my VIP group? Okay, so Renee, you I are? I think I am, what's it called? Uh, it's Becky's Pampered Chef Pantry. Uh-huh, I, I am. Okay, I so what I've been doing in there for the last, because I promised myself one of my commitments to my business this year was to do a better job in my VIP group this year. I go through these tangents where I do really good and then I'm quiet and then I do really good and then I'm quiet. Well, guess, how, guess what that does to my group? Absolutely nothing, okay? Because if you think about a party group or your VIP group, it has a heartbeat, okay? Otherwise known as an algorithm. And so when you post content that people are reacting to, that helps get your heartbeat going, right? And we want a strong heartbeat. But when you're not posting anything or nobody's reacting to your posts, that causes it to go down, okay? So our job is to get a consistent heartbeat going instead of it just being a flat line. Another way you could kind of look at that is a credit score, okay? So think about everything that you do in that VIP group is helping you to build a positive credit score. And when you're not getting the reactions or you're not getting the involvement and the engagement from those people, it's hurting your credit score. Does that make sense? It's just one more way of looking at it. Um, so our job is to get our credit score going, get our heartbeat going. And how you do that is by planning content out that really engages with your people that are in the group. Finding out what they need, right? Finding out what their issues are. And what I noticed, so the beginning of January, the first week, I did a seven day healthy eating challenge. I gave you guys the outline, the old outline that I had um, from a couple years ago from one of my friends. I took that, I tweaked it to Becky, right? I posted that in my group for seven days, had a lot of fun engagement with it. People were funny. You know, first couple days, the exercises I was posting, they're like, oh my God, are you trying to kill me? You know, just really got people talking and involved. Well, one of the other things I kept noticing on my wall as I was scrolling down through 
was people talking about their pressure cookers and I got an Instant Pot, what's your favorite recipe? You know, oh my gosh, I have an Instant Pot and I have no idea how to use it. And this is just looking through my personal, you know, through my personal wall and seeing all my friends talking about this. So I was like, hmm, maybe I need to use this to my advantage. Yeah, people have an Instant Pot, right? We have a quick cooker, but they both do the same job. So how can I leverage the fact that we know a ton of people got it for Christmas to my advantage? And so right now I'm in, I'm on day five of seven days of pressure cooking, right? So I'm using all Pampered Chef recipes, all of our Pampered Chef accessories, have a question every morning that I'm doing with them. And it's just really, really good content and engagement. When I posted um, the very first picture before I started the outline that I've been using, that, I, that I've been making, and I think it said on a scale of one to 10, um, how comfortable are you with your pressure cooker? I think I had 70 comments on that one simple post in my group. So what happens when you have 70 people comment? I'm telling you, these are people that have not interacted in this group in probably months, okay? So with the more people comment, the more people can see your post. Okay, it makes it show up more in their notifications. It makes it show up more on their, on their wall as they're scrolling. Because now at that credit score, you're building the credit score every time someone comments on something. Now here's what's really important though, guys. Whether you're in a group setting or on your personal wall, if you're going to like, love, you know, angry face, sad face, someone's post, it does you no good. You need to actually comment on people's posts in order to get the maximum results back for that heartbeat. So, you know, what I, what I find is that something I've started doing again this year is I'm going down through my friends list and literally alphabetically, and I'm going to their personal profiles and I'm intentionally seeking out commenting on one of their posts. Why am I doing that? Because for people that I haven't talked to in a while, I want to reestablish myself with them. And so just simply starting to have a conversation by, you know, commenting on one of their posts, kind of, it's like, oh, wait a minute, who's this Becky girl? I forgot who she was. Let me go to her profile and, you know, go stalk her for a second. And then it's, oh, that's right. She's a Pamper Chef consultant. So, you know, just simply taking five or 10 people every day, going, you know, going to my personal profile, I pull up my friends list, I start alphabetically, and I'm just going down five or 10 people a day and going to their personal wall and I'm finding a post and I'm making a comment on it. The other thing that that does is it makes those people that you haven't had a conversation with in a long time pop back up in your newsfeed. Because I mean, how long has it been since you've seen, I don't know, Sally Sue from like five years ago comment and, and it pop up on your personal wall. Facebook limits, anybody you're not interacting with on a consistent basis, you will not see in your newsfeed cycle. So the, when you go and actually engage with someone, now they're gonna pop back up in your newsfeed cycle, but you have to engage with them. So, you know, let's go back to planning our content in our VIP groups. You know, find out, you know, ask the question in your VIP group, right? What problems can I help you guys solve in your kitchen? Or maybe you do a poll in there and you say, so I'm thinking about running seven days of, and then maybe the, the you know, the answers that they can pick from are pressure cooking, or, you know, stoneware or comfort foods or whatever, let them decide what content they want you to post. Get them to be a part of that because the more you can get them to be a part of making that decision, guess what? Now they're buying into it. Now they want to be involved because you've asked for their opinion and they're given the opinion. And so now they're kind of like, oh, wait a minute, Renee wants to help me right? Or maybe you plan your content around what the specials are that are coming up. So what goes on special next month? Our stoneware, right? So guess what Becky's doing next week? Seven days of stoneware. 
And why would I want to do seven days of stoneware? Because it's going on sale. So see, the, the whole strategy behind me doing seven days of pressure cooking this week was because what's on sale this month? They can get the mm -hmm. quick cooker for 60% off. And I figured by the time this, this seven days is over, it's only halfway through the month. And I still have time to grab a couple of these people to do a virtual party with me this month. See, always thinking, always thinking. You know, and maybe they already have a quick cooker or maybe they already have an instant pot, but I guarantee you that they don't have the 10 accessories that we carry in our product line. And so with this outline, the way I've been structuring it, every day they've seen those accessories and what those accessories can help make recipe wise. And I've had a bunch of them like, oh my gosh, I need this. So maybe you don't get bookings, but maybe by the end of that seven days, you post a, a shopping link and say, hey, you know, I know a couple of you guys were excited about the, I don't know, um, the steaming basket set for the quick cooker. You know, if any of you want to shop, here's a link for you to shop through, right? And now I'm potentially opening up the door to orders. But I've also helped them solve the problems that they've been having with their quick cooker or instant pot. I've helped them by giving them, I've been posting four recipes every single day in a post. So I've given them almost 30 new recipes to try. I've showed them all of the accessories that we have that, you know, yes, I know they are technically not supposed to use in their Instant Pot, but do you think I'm gonna discourage them from using them in their Instant Pot? Probably not. Um, so they know that the content that I'm sharing is actually helping them solve problems for an existing you know, piece of equipment that they have and maybe they're not sure about how to use or they're just not 100% bought into the idea of using it. So if you're gonna plan out, you know, stoneware next week, I mean, how can you do that? And guys, the way that I've been doing it is I've been breaking it up into breakfast, lunch, dinner, desserts, right? So that's like four or five days of content right there as far as the recipes go. And what stones can I pair up to go with those items? I just sit down and I plan it out. I do three to four posts a day and literally I have it all mapped out and then I'm saving it because guess what I'm going to reuse here in a couple months. I'll have everything already ready to rerun everything already over, you know, over again. <clears throat> but I'll tell you what it's doing is it's actually getting conversations started and going and also helping me to, to have a reason after this outline is over to reach out to everyone that's interacted in the last seven days. Okay. So it's kind of opening a door back up. So maybe you reach out to those people and say, Hey, Renee, um, so I just wanted to check in and kind of get a, you know, feel for how you enjoyed the last seven days of pressure cooking. And if there was any more questions I could help answer. Right. So we're starting again with asking for their personal feedback, helping them solve a problem. Right. So we're getting that out of the way and starting the conversation. And then I can introduce the idea of booking a show from that. It's not me going right in for, Oh my gosh, thanks for participating in my, in my seven days of pressure cooking. Are you ready for, you know, are you ready to have a party now? You know, you definitely want to soften it up a little bit, you know, by getting their feedback and then, you know, asking for, asking for the feedback, you know, getting their opinion, opinions on everything, and then kind of walking your way into asking about a booking. So what other kinds of things do you guys think are good ideas in your VIP groups? I don't know, I do live cooking videos. Live cooking videos. Absolutely. And you know why it's important to do live cooking videos? Shows real life, especially at my house. <laughs> Yesterday I did one and every Sunday one of my grandsons loves to come home with me and I made him my little assistant and he told a joke and it was so <laughs> darn cute. It was so darn cute. People want to see your real life. They want to see... Becky in her pajamas with her crazy hair, you know, at like 10 o'clock in the morning. You guys would not believe when I go live, you know, my customers tend to ask me, hey, are you wearing pajamas? Because they know me. <laughs> they know me. They know. And I always tell them I'm business up top and, up, and I'm a party at the bottom. 
right? Because I'm normally in pajamas at the bottom and I got a nice shirt on up top. Um, actually, I have jeans on right now. I was going to say, I thought I changed in pajama pants, but I haven't yet. But, you know, they want to get to know you. Nobody expects perfection except for you. I think a lot of times we get in our heads and, and say, oh my gosh, well, my kitchen's not clean. Um, I'm not put together. I don't have makeup on. I ain't got my hair done and I can't go live. And we let every one of those be our excuse to not, not do something in our business that we know we should do. So stop it. Just stop it. Nobody wants perfection, Branda. And I see her like with her little half smile because she knows it's so true. The other thing about going live is this. It, number one, it shows the real you. Number two, it also helps your credit score, okay? Or the algorithm of your group. I will tell you, when you go live, you're gonna see people's names pop up that haven't popped up in a while. And that's because it gets sent out to more people in that group when you go live than when you post. So go live, people, go live. All right, what else should you do in your VIP groups? Remember to take pictures and do soft posts. Yay! Soft posting and pictures. Y'all, I don't even care if it's on a paper plate, right? I don't care what you're posting the food of and what it's on, because I would just make a joke and say, this is Becky's fine china, right? It's not really about that. It's about really showing that you, as somebody that sells these kitchen products, really does use what you're selling. Because mm -hmm. if you're not showing it and sharing it, they're probably like, oh yeah, well, Brandis sells it, but I never see her using it. So if they know that you're using it and they know that you believe in your products, again, it goes back to that belief. You know, if you believe it, they'll believe it. Okay. And if you believe it, then you're going to go live and show it, or you're going to post pictures about it. So some other things that you want to consider is your name of your VIP group. You know, looking back now, I mean, I've had my VIP group for years and years and I wouldn't change it. I probably actually I've considered changing it. Um, because it was just something that I randomly like did a long time ago, but you know, letting your, if, if you're a newer group, letting that community of people help to pick that name, you know, that could be a fun way to get people engaged in there and make them really want to be a part of it. Your cover photo that's in there. Okay. That's really important because you want to have your face somewhere there. So what I look, Renee's like, no, yes, Renee, yes. What I tend to do is I tend to do a banner with the specials of the next month and then just put a little picture of myself up there on that. And why would you want to do that? Well, those people that are in the group know you, right? But do their friends know you? Mm. No. And so what if Sally has a friend that needs a Pampered Chef consultant and Sally is sharing your group to her friend. Wouldn't we rather Sally's friend know exactly who she's gonna be dealing with, right? And so when you share the group link, it actually shares the banner photo. And so if your picture's there, now they get to see you and they get to see your smile and they get to see your a warm, welcome person. So that's why, I mean, it's not that, you know, we want our faces to be plastered everywhere, but remember, you know, those are, those are all ways that we're going to sell ourselves, right? Is because people need to see us. They just do need to see us. Um, so what is the difference? I get asked this a lot. What's the difference between having a VIP group and a Facebook business page? Has anyone ever thought about that? And like how you use the two and what are the difference and where should my time and energy go to? And oh my gosh, it's just one more thing that I have to deal with. Okay. So your VIP group, remember, is going to be that small tight knit community where there's lots of conversation and that's the one that you're primarily posting in. Okay. So I look at that one as a deep dive into my kitchen. 
right? That is them getting to know the Becky that's in the pajamas with the hair not done, okay? The business page is like, have you guys ever went window shopping before? You know, you're walking by that jewelry store and you know you can't walk in because you ain't got no money to spend. <laughs> but you're looking and you're checking out the biggest diamond right there from afar. That's what I, how I look at our business pages, okay? It's an opportunity for people to take a look from the outside in. And the VIP group is the opposite. It's from the inside out. So your business page really is where we create our parties. It's where we do our parties, right? Because that's what Facebook wants us to do. It's somewhere where, yes, I still update my banner. You know, I still have my face on the banner because again, people, okay, so if people are researching, if, they're, if they go onto Facebook and they go up into the search bar and let's say they live in Indiana and they put in Pampered Chef Indiana, it's going to pull up a list of business pages that are connected to Indiana and Pampered Chef. Okay. So it's not going to kind of divest and figure out who belongs to what. It's going by the content that you've given it when you created that business page. And that's how people are searching. So a business page is a way for people to find a Pamper Chef consultant. They may not know you, but you may be in their search area if they're looking. And it's the opportunity for them to window shop you. Okay. So content there is going to be less. Content there is going to be more important though. Okay. So content there um, is going to be again, soft selling posts, you going live because you going live, it, it helps your reach in your area when people are looking. So again, you want to have a high credit score on your business page because you want your name to pop up first. If people are window shopping for a pamper chef consultant. And so the higher your credit score goes, the higher your name is on that list when they start looking in your area. So, uh, so I have an Instagram account, okay? And I have my Instagram connected to my Facebook business page. And what I love about that is that when I post something on my Instagram account, it automatically posts to my business page. So I don't have to think about posting to my business page. It does it from one social media platform to another and so I'm constantly getting a picture to two when I post to one. The twofer, we all love a twofer, right? So that's really that difference though between the two, you know, between the, the VIP group and the business page. Your, your VIP group is gonna be your small, tight-knit community of people that you really have relationships and connections built with. And then the, the business page is the people that are window shopping you and don't really have um, any kind of commitment to you yet. Now, how do you get those people from there to there? Because that's a tricky part, right? So along in your posts, you know, once a week, I always share my private group, my VIP groups link on my business page wall. So that people have the chance and opportunity if they've been window shopping me for a while to join my private community. Okay, and that's how you can get them to go from one, one setting to another setting. So, you know, all of these things and all of these ideas and strategies, um, they really are built to help you be a, a better representative for Pampered Chef, but really it's all about building your own brand. Every one of us represent Pampered Chef in a different way, right? You know, me, I'm the wild crazy mama four people, you know, know that my family's like first priority in my life. Like, you know, I love my pamper chef business. I love to be wild and crazy. I get out of the house. I go do pamper chef to get away from the family sometimes. Um, you know, branding yourself is really important. Like you want people to know when they think of pamper chef, and they think of you, what is the very first thing that they would think of? And that's what your brand is. So those are things that we should start thinking about. If I have a customer and 
the first thing that they think about you, Renee, what is that first thing that you want them to think about when they think Renee and Pampered Chef? That I can help them. Okay, so I'm helpful. a professional and yeah, and I professional, solution centered, right? Um, what about you, Angie? What's the first thing you want your customers to think about? Uh, probably family. Family, <laughs> right? Brenda, how about you? <clears throat> I would say family and being able to help them with tips in the kitchen. Okay, yeah, so we all want to be known for something. And so it's really for each one of you guys to decide what exactly do you want to be known for when it comes to Pampered Chef, okay? And that's really how you go forward with branding yourself in your VIP group. Um, you know, deciding that if, if Branda, you want to be known for all your amazing cooking tips, then really devoting time and energy into, into making amazing tips for them, right? You know, Renee, if you want to be solution centered for your customers, then how can you use that to your advantage to really help them solve the problems? You know, and Angie, if you're all about family, you know, think about it. How many of your customers probably are about family too? And how can you take that family aspect and really drive that home in your business. You know, for me, the way that you get people to believe in you, you being representing by a family is to get your family in the pictures, get your family in the live videos, you know, and let them be a part of it. Let them see that there's the center of your life in your kitchen, you know? So that's something I want everyone to kind of think about is when people think of you and Pampered Chef, what is the first thought that you want them to think of, okay? And that's how you go about branding yourself. So <clears throat> we're gonna touch base on bookings for a second because I think it's really important for me to definitely go back to the beginning and share once more the don't, okay? You don't want to always post about needing bookings. And more so on your personal wall, you know, that's a place where it's a little bit more forgiving, but if you are 100% desperate in your VIP group and you're solving no problems and you're building new relationships, all you're doing is causing people to leave your group or you're, you're causing people to turn off the notifications. You're definitely not causing them to send you a message to book a show. So, you know, if you're in my VIP group, you may see me post once a month the specials and that's pretty much it. You know, I do not post about, oh my gosh, I need to book a show. Oh my gosh, I have 20 spots and, you know, who's going to fill them? Um, because that's not how people want to, to be sold the idea of booking a show, okay? They want to see what product do I need to put in my kitchen how is Renee going to help it get into my kitchen the cheapest route possible, right? So once you've sold them on the idea of the product, you have started having conversations with them about said product. Then you reach out to them and then in private, you say, hey, Renee, so I know you've been eyeing the, right, or the rock crack. Um, not sure if you've seen me post earlier in the month what the specials are for February yet or not but I can help you put the rock rock in your kitchen for like 80 bucks. What do you think? Okay. So you build the connections, you build the relationships, you have the conversations going, and then you reach out in a private message because again, it goes back. They want to know that you're listening and that you're paying attention. So if you know what's on people's wish lists, you don't call them out in front of everybody else, right? You don't want to post where they're showing interest in a rock rock. Say, Oh my gosh, do you want to book a party? Because guess what? There's 500 other people watching what their response is going to be. So most of the time, they're not going to respond at all. So that's why you take it to a private conversation. Does that make sense? Good. So what questions do you have for me? What would you say about, I know we've posted them before, like the I've been challenged to sell like so many of a certain product. Are those really a good idea or? I have mixed feelings on them. 
Um, they're a once every blue moon kind of thing that you do. Okay. Um, some people use them every single month as a strategy to get sales. And I will tell you that it's a way again, to turn people away from you. Um, it's a reason for, for us to look desperate. Um, and the way honestly that I would use those would be a little bit different because once you start having relationships and you've built that sense of community in your VIP group and people know that they can trust you. If you said this, if you said, Hey, you guys, so I have a goal and I am so close to reaching it. And I'm like, I don't know, $75 away, or let's say $200 away. I'm a $200 away from my personal goal. And you know, I'm doing this challenge because I need to reach that goal. It's a little bit different than saying, I've been challenged to sell 20 brownie pans by the end of the month, you know, by my director. That's what typically people post. Because people, if you make it personal and you let them know that they're being part of something to help you, it's different than just putting it out there saying, I need $200 in sales. But that's only after you've built those connections and relationships. Okay. Okay. It's a good question. Angie, did you have a question? Yeah, but I don't know if it's this group, you know, this training is really the place to ask it. But I had a question about the virtual party outline that uh -huh. you posted. So I was looking at it because I have one coming up later this month. And it looks like with the rock star gift, there's seven other gifts that you give away. What do you give away? That's like eight gifts. <laughs> so I will tell you, um, I was very hesitant in, in doing so many freebies, but I will tell you that the results that it's yielded have been amazing. Okay. Um, because it gets people interacting. Um, I've seen my show sales double since adding all of the free gifts to the outline. But I want you guys to think about this. If you need to scale that back for your own personal good, then go ahead and do it. You know, you can edit those words any, any way that you need to. Um, if you don't want to give away gifts, that's fine too. Um, the ones what that- What do you give away? Just like simple, like $2 things or- okay. Deep and Best Cookbooks. That's what they get. Um, honestly, like I have a stash of Seasons Best Cookbooks from the last like, you know, nine years. Um, and so if, you know, if you're somebody that has cash and carry stuff in your home, it's doing, you no know, good sitting, sitting there, right? Yeah, it's better yeah. served a purpose by sending it to someone as a gift than it is sitting in your closet. Um, but if you're someone that's going to add it to their order, I am cheap, you guys. So season's best cookbook, the citrus peeler and the bamboo tongs are the three cheapest products in the catalog. Okay. So that's what they get. That's exactly what they get. Um, yeah, but then how about the posts where it's not added to the order? Which one? There's a few in there that just are like games and I'll announce the winner tonight and uh -huh. you'll get a free gift. Yeah. And so when, when I, how I get past <laughs> that is when I announce the winner in the comments below, I say, hey, congratulations, Brando. You, you know, were the closest guest to the post. I will add your free gift to your order once placed. Okay, so just because the post doesn't talk about adding it to the order, right. you say later. Yes. When yeah. I announce the winner and tag them in it, that's when I tell them I will add that prize to their order once placed. Okay. So is there okay. a strategy to not saying that every time that the free gift will be added to your order? I, I say it every time. Every time I announce a winner, it's once placed. Right. But like the post that you have in your virtual party outline, not mm -hmm. all of them that talk about the winner will get a free gift. It doesn't say, and it will be added to your order. Yeah. There, there's some, I don't know. I think this outline, all of them that are a game have a free gift attached to them. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah. I know the last outline, there were a couple games that didn't have them out, you know, them attached to it. And so mm -hmm. I just tell them, congratulations, you were, you know, you, you had the, the correct guess or whatever. And I don't mm -hmm. mention any gift when I, when I comment down below, when I tag them. 
I don't um I don't know how you would feel about this, but if you are at I've noticed I found a simple slice at a thrift store brand new in a box and paid like two bucks for it. Right. And I gave it away as a gift. I mean if yeah. you're if you're one that goes to like Goodwill or you mm -hmm. know something I mean, you can tell the items brand new those don't hurt to give away as gifts either yeah and and another thing you guys i mean seriously if money is an issue with gifting um there are e-cookbooks that i've uploaded into the wolfpack organization group in the files ask about that yeah if that was a gift. free e cookbook you know you're sending them something that is a gift for a lot of people um, so, I mean, you, and you could say, simply say, you know, Hey, congratulations, Angie, you were our winner. I'm going to send you a message with a free e-cookbook, right? I mean, you're giving them something. So, um, whether, you know, you're always going to have people eventually that are going to be snarky about it and they're going to be like, Oh my God, she's a tight water, whatever, but that's on them. That's not on you. You're, you're actually fulfilling your end of it. And it's a game and it's in a Facebook party and people take things too seriously. Um, <laughs> But, you know, you, you can also, like I said, though, if it's too many gifts, then you can edit it down, um, mm -hmm. edit the words and change them so that it's less for you. Um, okay. The one that I would definitely keep intact is the scavenger hunt because it's a four day challenge. And if they don't complete all four days of it, then they don't get a gift at the end of it anyway. But I will tell you that that four day scavenger hunt opens the door to conversation because they have to message you with the answers for it. Um, and so I get bookings all the time from that scavenger hunt. And you know what, for me to give away a $2 cookbook, you know, um, to have those conversations with people and get future bookings is completely worth it. Okay. Is it just one winner at the end of four days or is it a winner per day? It's, it's so they have to do, um, there's four at, there's four days worth of scavenger hunts and they have, have to do every single day. So you may have five people on one party that do all four days of scavenger hunts. And so you're giving oh, okay. five seasons best at the end of it. But like I said, if you get one or two bookings from it, mm -hmm. you know, that's what it's all about. Okay. So Renee, any questions from you? Not right now. Most of them have been answered. Okay, good. Well, hopefully you guys felt this was a valuable use of your time. Um, you know, again, you know, you guys can reach out to me anytime you guys have questions. Um, I definitely appreciate you guys joining me on here tonight. And uh, next week, what should we talk about next week? What do you, what do you guys think we need to get back to basics on next week? Uh, being on time. <laughs> punctuality i don't know if i'll be on next week next week it's my birthday that day so wow you don't want to celebrate your birthday with me fine i love y'all but <laughs> well if you guys have any ideas as far as things you want to learn about um let me know what your thoughts are on them um because i'm always open to suggestions and like i said you know i really want to keep these conversations that we're having simple um, because I think that there's, there's so many things that we never have time for, um, that are really important. Like tonight, social media is super important in our business. So what about like actually planning your content, planning content? Okay. That's a thought. And what about getting bookings outside of Facebook parties and like starting from scratch, starting from scratch. Sort of? Okay. Different yeah. ideas to get bookings outside of social media, outside of the parties. Okay. So bookings from scratch. I like that idea. That's a good one. Any ideas from you, Miss Angie? No, no, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Okay. But if I think of something, I'll message yeah. her or post it. Yep, absolutely. All righty, my friends. Well, again, thank you guys. I appreciate your time and I will talk with you soon. Oh. No, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.